2016 out of Lord of the Rings. Palantir Technologies, a highly secretive software developer whose name is derived from a magical crystal ball in J.R.R. Tolkien's fantasy novel, has been gobbling up real estate in the upscale home of Stanford University and, according to critics, uprooting a vibrant startup ecosystem in the process. Now, James, this CNBC article goes on and on and on and on and doesn't really say much of anything. It's got pages seemingly just about the real estate issues. But again, the articles are there for people to read. But we continue by noting Palantir is notorious for its secrecy and for good reason. Its software allows customers to make sense of massive amounts of sensitive data to enable fraud detection, data security, rapid health care delivery, and catastrophe response. Government agencies are big buyers of the technology. FBI, CIA, DOD, and IRS have all been customers. Between 30 and 50 percent of Palantir's business is tied to the public sector, according to people familiar with its finances and the coup de grace in QTEL, the CIA's venture arm was an early investor, just as they were of Facebook and Google. So again, we ask the question, gosh, why would the Central Intelligence Agency want to buy up these new facilities and softwares? James, the rhetorical question. Yeah, rhetorical. But I think the, the more interesting rhetorical question, or actual a question with an answer that we'll never really know, <laughs> is what percentage of Silicon Valley is the CIA? I mean, the, to what extent can you even separate them? And how many of these comp- companies are really just front companies? And I think the, uh, the answer would be surprising to a lot of people in the general public. Maybe not so much to us. But yes, uh, Palantir and the fact that it's taking over Silicon Valley should be disturbing given its climate clientele, who we do know does include the Alphabet Soup agencies. And I know Pando.com has done a lot of good coverage on Palantir and its connections with The Intercept, for example, buying up the the Snowden documents and sitting on them. Uh, But no one seems to care about that anymore. Anyway, um, uh, Bloomberg, I know, had this story that I'll put in the links. It's a good overview. Palantir, the war on terror's secret weapon that says an organization like the CIA or FBI can have thousands of different databases, each with its own quirks, financial records, DNA samples, sound samples, video clips, maps, floor plans, human intelligence reports from all over the world. Gluing all that into a coherent whole can take years. Even if that system comes together, it will struggle to handle different types of data. Sales records on a spreadsheet, say, plus video surveillance images. What Palantir does, says Aviva Leiden, an analyst at Gartner IT, is make it really easy to mine these big data sets. The company's software pulls off one of the great computer science feats of the era. It combs through all available databases, identifying related pieces of information, and puts everything together in one place. So why is a company that does this taking over Silicon Valley and becoming such a big player precisely because of its utility to the big alphabet soup agencies that need exactly that type of technology? So here is the nexus between the intelligence agencies and the work they do and Silicon Valley and everything they do. And... I think the fruit of this that we see in in the general public is Apple and you know Microsoft and all these fancy gadgets and goo ads that we can play with our fondle slab. So look how fun it all is. Underneath and behind all of that is this immense infrastructure for collecting, sucking up, and reading as much data as possible on every human being and everything they're doing. And uh, I mean, it's monstrous to think about. If you really peel back that, just even that top layer of the onion, it really becomes quite hideous underneath. But we're never supposed to look underneath that. And uh, it's just stories like this that give us a little bit of an insight into that um, lower layer of the onion.